This is 7.3 part two. As you can see, I drew the 45, 45, 90 triangle and also the 30, 60, 90 triangle. So please go ahead and do that. You know, stop the video if you have to and do that before we do these next couple problems. So part A asks us to find sine of 45 degrees times cosine of 30 degrees. All right, so once again, just as a quick reminder, we have SOHCAHTOA. So sine is defined as opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of 45 degrees is opposite, which is 1, over radical 2, which equals radical 2 over 2. And then cosine of 30 degrees. Cosine is defined as adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side, when we look at 30 degrees, is radical 3 over 2. So now let's do the problem. Sine of 45 degrees times cosine of 30 degrees. We know sine of 45 degrees is radical 2 over 2 times cosine of 30 degrees is radical 3 over 2. And if we do the math, we get radical 6 over 2. By the way, this does not reduce because the 6 is under the radical and 2 is not. So this is my answer. Part B. Part B asks us to find tangent of 45 degrees, which is pi over 4, minus sine of pi over 3, which is 60 degrees. So let's go ahead and find tangent of pi over 4. We look at the 45, 45, 90 triangle. Tangent's defined as opposite over adjacent. So this is 1 over 1, which equals 1. Sine of pi over 3. Once again, pi over 3 is 60 degrees, and it's defined as opposite over hypotenuse. So if we look at the 60 degree angle, opposite is radical 3 over the hypotenuse, which is 2. Okay, now we're going to put the pieces together. So tangent of pi over 4 minus sine of pi over 3. Tangent of pi over 4 is 1, minus sine of pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. We have to find a common denominator. The common denominator is 2. So 1 becomes excuse me, 1 becomes 2 over 2 minus radical 3 over 2. Okay. So since we have a common denominator, we can write this up as 2 minus radical 3 over 2. Now, I can't reduce the 2s down. The reason why is you cannot reduce a binomial Binomial means two terms. That's what you have in the numerator. I'm going to highlight that. With a monomial, you can't do that. So the answer is 2. Sorry, I meant to use the pen tool. 2 minus radical 3 over 2. There you go. That is your answer. All right, finally, C. Uh, the first thing we need to do is find tangent of pi over 6. Tangent is defined as opposite over adjacent. Pi over 6 is equivalent to 30 degrees. So opposite side is 1, adjacent is radical 3. If I rationalize this, I get radical 3 over 3. All right, sine of pi over 4. Pi over 4 is equivalent to uh, 45 degrees. We already found this. Sine of 45 degrees is radical 2 over 2. All right, now we're going to do the math. So we have to square tangent of pi over 6, plus we're going to have to square sine of pi over 4. Okay, so pi over 6 is radical 3 over 3 squared, plus sine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2 squared, and radical 3 squared is 3, 3 squared is 9, plus radical 2 squared is 2, and 2 squared is 4. Reducing this down, I get 1 third plus 1 half. LCD is 6. So if we build this up, we get 2 over 6 plus 3 over 6, which equals 5 over 6. And that is your answer. Okay, we're going to work on the next page. So the next page is actually objective number 3. So uh, it's talking about using a calculator. Please note that we will not be using calculators on test number one. However, you may have questions that in my math lab that ask you to use a cal calculator. So I'm just forewarning you. 
Uh, so just for this part, we can use our calculator. So what we're going to do is we're looking for sine, cosine, and tangent. They're very easy to do on the calculator because basically they have buttons that say sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, it looks like this. There's a button that says sine, one that says cosine, and one that says tangent. Uh, however, the reciprocal functions, cosecant, secant, and cotangent are a little bit more difficult to find on the calculator. Uh, so what you have to do for those is you're actually going to have to use the reciprocal function. So to find secant, you're going to do 1 over cosine of whatever the angle is. If you want to find cosecant, it's going to be 1 over sine. And if you want to find cotangent, you do 1 over tangent. Okay? And I want to make a little note here. Do not use these buttons. These buttons are inverse signs. They are not reciprocal functions. Okay, when we talk about inverse sine in chapter 8, you're going to be using those a lot. So I'm going to even erase this. Don't write that down because I don't want you to have the wrong instructions. Okay, so on your calculator, before you start using it, you have to make sure you're in the correct mode. There is a mode button on your calculator. On my calculator, it's right here. Uh, I highlighted it. Okay, that is the mode button. So... You click on the mode button, and that should bring you up to a screen that looks like what I just made an arrow to. And you're going to see radians or degrees. So one is going to be highlighted. So you pick the one that's highlighted. If you're looking for radians, you highlight the radian section. If you're looking for degrees, you highlight the degree section. After you're done fix fixing or figuring out which one you want, you have to hit the second button, at least on my calculator, and then you click mode to get out of that menu, okay? So once again, this is to quit out of the menu. All right, now let's go ahead and do the next problem. Use the calculator to find the approximate value of cosine of 52 degrees. Before I do this, I need to have my mode in degrees. So uh, go ahead and turn on your calculator, click on the mode key, make sure it's in degrees. Once it is, you hit second mode to quit out of it, and then you're going to just type in. You take and put in the cosine key, click on it, put in 52, and then hit enter. And when I do that, I get 0.6157. I'm rounding uh, to this place value right here. Okay, second one. The mode is once again in degrees. This is not going to be straightforward because we do not have a cosecant key. So what I'm going to have to do is look up 1 over sine of 27 degrees. Why? Because sine is the reciprocal function of cosecant. Okay, so what does that look like on the calculator? Once you're in degrees, you're going to do one, use the division sign key, and then you're going to use the sign key, and you're gonna type in 27. And when you do that, you should get 2.2027. So there's my answer for that one. All right, last one, tangent. The mode has to be in radians. Okay, tangent, I have a key for that, so no problem, it's not a reciprocal function. So I'm going to click on the tangent key. I'm going to click on the pi key, divided by 12. Okay, so once again, make sure your mode's in radians. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to quit out of the, the menu, and then I'm going to click tangent. I'm going to find my pi key, and then uh, I'm going to divide that by 12, end parentheses. I get 
seven, nine. Okay, let's move on. Objective number four is model and solve application problems. Uh, so some of the word problems may talk about either the angle of depression or the angle of elevation. So it's good to know the difference between the two. The one on the left, the little diagram here, the horizon line is right at the guy's eyes. So if the horizon line is straight out and then we have some object in the sky that forms a right angle. The angle of elevation is the one right in here, okay? Angle of depression, so once again, the sight line is the horizontal line. Wherever the object is, forms 90 degree, and the angle of depression is actually over here. It's your sight line down to the object, okay? So hopefully that makes a little more sense. Let's try one of the application problems. Meteorologist, find the height of a cloud using an instrument called a solometer. A solometer consists of a light projector that directs a vertical light beam up to the cloud base. So basically what that looks like is we have a cloud. And then we have a light detector going right to the base of that cloud. So here's the base of the cloud and the light projector. And I'll, I'll make that as a, an LP for light projector is going to be uh, causing a line straight up to the cloud base, okay? Now, uh, they also have a light detector that scans the cloud to detect the light beam. So the light detector is not in the same place as the light projector. The light uh, detector is usually placed on the side of where the light projector is. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw that out. So let's read the next bit. See figure 35A, you do not have that because that's why I'm drawing it out. On December 8th, 2010 at Midway Airport in Chicago, a solometer was employed to find the height of a cloud cover. It was set up with a light detector. Once again, our light detector is right underneath the cloud. And it was set up with a light detector 300 feet from the light projector. Okay, so here's the light detector, got it? Light projectors over here. These two, we're, we're going to assume that the runway is completely uh, level. So these two lines are going to form a 90 degree angle. And then it says the angle of elevation from the light detector to the cloud base is 75 degrees. Okay, so we know the light projector to the light detector is 300 feet. Uh, they want to know what the height of the cloud cover is. So that's that side here. This is the height from the light projector up to the cloud. So let's go ahead and redraw our right triangle. So here's 75 degrees, 300 feet, and X. All right, I'm going to just write Sokotoa. And let's label these sides. So 300 is going to be the adjacent side to 75 degrees. X is opposite. And this other side is the hypotenuse. We're looking for the opposite side. We have adjacent. So what trig function links up adjacent and opposite? Hopefully you said tangent. Because tangent by definition is opposite over adjacent. So let's go ahead and fill this out. Tangent of 75 degrees equals the opposite side, which we don't know, over the adjacent side, which is 300. Now we have to solve for x. Okay, to do that, I have to multiply both sides by 300 to clear the side with the x. And when I do that, I get 300 times tangent of 75 degrees equals x. Now we're going to use our calculator. Make sure the mode is in degrees. So I'm checking mine right now. I'm turning it into degrees. And I'm going to type it in. 300 times tangent of 75 degrees equals one thousand one hundred nineteen. 
point six two feet. Okay, and I rounded mine to the hundredths place on my math lab. It will tell you what to round to. So before you start working on the problem, make sure you read the directions very carefully. Okay, that's it. So we're done with uh, 7.3. Make sure you do the Canvas quiz covering 7.3, and I'll see you in class.